Um, thank you so much to everyone that wrote in questions in advance. I've reviewed all of those and we're gonna get through as many as possible. I'm so excited that you guys are so interested in this topic of gut health. It is such a foundational important topic. And so today we're gonna cover as much as we can, but it's really gonna be just the tip of the iceberg. So jumping in, for those of you that have not met me yet, um, I'll give you a little introduction who I, who I am, why I'm here, and then we're gonna jump in. And I'll be sharing my screen today. I have a little presentation to share with you. And then of course at the end, I will be giving you a special discount code as a thank you for coming. So my name is Danielle. I'm a registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild and certified holistic nutritionist. I'm also the instructor of mycology at the Colorado School of Clinical Herbalism. And at Four Sigmatic, I'm our national educator. And as a nutritionist and with my background, gut health has been so foundational to my work for many, many years. And for those of you that have been longtime Four Sigmatic customers and part of our fungi family, you know that we're not about short-term solutions. Right? We're looking at holistic long-term approaches to wellness and gut health is so aligned with this philosophy, right? When we're supporting our gut and we'll talk about the ways that we can do that to make sure that we're not just using short-term fixes, but that we're actually nourishing and building our bodies from this kind of root-based place. Uh, so let me see if I can go ahead. Share your screen. So with the questions, again, if you just joined us, please use the Q&A, not the chat today. Um, and then I do have to tell you that I'm not your healthcare practitioner. So if you do have specific questions about your personal health or specific diseases, I always have to recommend checking in with your healthcare practitioner. So little disclosure there. And let's see if I can go ahead and share my screen for you. We're going to jump in. Let me see. Can you guys see this? Someone in the chat say, yeah, we can see it, Danielle. Can you see my screen? All right, I see someone in the chat saying something in the Q&A. Yes, okay, cool, great. So gut health, right? The theme is gut health, but specifically, we're gonna be diving into probiotics, prebiotics, what they both are, do I need both? And then of course, introducing you to our newest product, our mushroom ground coffee with probiotics, and then giving you a discount code at the end so that you can all try it and let me know what you think. So gut health, there are few areas of research that, have, that, are, that are being explored more than gut health, right? We're really realizing that it's at the root of this idea of holistic wellness right? So the opposite of band-aids, but holistic wellness. And we're learning that gut health is so much more than just digestion. Well, of course that's important. We also know that gut health is connected to things like our immune system, our skin, and even our mood, right? The way that we feel every day. And so you might've heard of the microbiome. I want to expand that to introduce you as well to the mycobiome, right? Myco being mycology fungi. And what is this, right? So this is, there's a complex ecosystem that re resides within our bodies, right? Within primarily in our gut. And it's this diverse community of microorganisms. And there are trillions of microorganisms, the exact number is different depending on where you're looking, but we know there are trillions of microorganisms that exist within our body. These microorganisms are bacteria, yeast, and fungi, and the goal is to have, to feed the good ones, right? The probiotics are the good bacteria that live within our body. So we want this proper balance of more good than bad, right? But we have both, all this bacteria, fungi, yeast that live within our gut, and they have a specific diet. So it's this idea, whenever we're eating, whenever we're nourishing ourselves, I want you all to be thinking, who am I feeding, right? Am I feeding the good or am I feeding the bad? And diet is a big topic, and I can try to answer some questions as they come in, but essentially some themes for all of us are that the bad bacteria mostly thrive upon things like sugar, processed foods, unhealthy fats, and the good bacteria primarily feed on 
fiber. So we're gonna jump in. So probiotics hopefully are familiar to many of you. And probiotics are these microbes, right? The bacteria or yeast that are beneficial to our gut health. And we know that now that they're beneficial to our gut health, it means that there's gonna be a benefit to our general well being as well. So these are the good bacteria. And there's tons of different strains of probiotics. Each strain is gonna support a different health condition. And there's been lots of research, like what's the perfect balance of strains for different bodies? And the answer is, for those of you that, that know me and have come to my webinars before, I'll always, always come back to this fact that every body is unique, right? Each specific body is gonna require a different balance of whether it's nutrients, probiotics, for us, for you as an individual, to feel your best. So what we do know, while it's not like everyone should take this and this, we do know that diversity is really important. So that comes from eating, right, a diverse diet. Every time you're eating a, a wide range of, of different foods, of colors, you're actually feeding and supporting different strains of probiotics in your body. So diversity is key. And when we're going to be talking about probiotics, I just wanted to give a definition. You'll see the CFU, right? Those are the units that, that probiotics are measured by. And what that means is colony forming units. So we'll get into this a little later, but in our new Four Sigmatic probiotic coffee, there are 1 billion CFUs per serving, those colony forming units. And I love talking about what we're already doing, right? Elevating routines. So if you, you know, diet is just as important as incorporating, uh, whether it's supplements or functional mushrooms and all this goodness into your daily life. But what are foods that already have contain a high amount of probiotics? And these are our fermented foods. So things like yogurt, sauerkraut and kimchi, kombucha or john and then kefirs, misos, tempeh, and a lot of our pickled vegetables. I love fun facts, so I wanted to say that probiotic, the use of probiotics is nothing new. It actually goes back centuries. People used to leave out milk to ferment, and then they would drink that because they knew that it had, um, they felt better, right? It was having benefits to their health. So it's, it's an old tradition to be incorporating probiotics into our daily lives. Now, prebiotics, this is where I get really excited. What are prebiotics? So they are a form of carbohydrates, mostly fibers, that our bodies don't have the enzymes to digest. So what does that mean? When we eat a prebiotic, it actually is able to make its way through the acidic environment of our stomach all the way into our intestines, right? Into our large intestine or our colon. And there, it begins to ferment and actually act as food for all of those different strains of probiotics, right? So pre, before, we're actually feeding and nourishing the probiotics. And so when you take prebiotics, we are promoting biodiversity of these microorganisms. And we want the probiotics to survive and thrive. And so instead of just, I'm going to jump down to this quote, which I think explains it really well. When you take probiotics, think of that like the equivalent of restocking a pond with fish, right? So adding strains to our ecosystem that resides within our gut. But prebiotics, by contrast, is like nourishing, supporting, feeding the fish that are already in the pond right? Feeding those probiotics that are already within our bodies. And so where do we find prebiotics? They're mostly found in starchy roots. So think about things like chicory or Jerusalem artichoke, this really exciting ingredient that I'm going to introduce you to in a moment called yacone, dandelion root, and then a lot of our alliums. So this picture here of garlic, other alliums or onions, leeks, and then functional mushrooms. We'll talk about prebiotics and functional mushrooms. So the prebiotic that we are featuring in our new mushroom ground coffee is called yacon. And there are actually two different prebiotic fibers in yacon. It's a root, right? It is uh, very traditional in South American cultures. 
It's been used for centuries and it's part of the Asteraceae family. I'm an herbalist, so I love to geek out about plant families and botany, but similar family as sunflowers, dandelions, chicory, artichoke, right? So many of those prebiotics we discussed on the previous slide. And so there's two forms of prebiotic fiber found in this yukon. So we are getting these, they're called FOS, or fructooligosaccharides, as well as inulin. Another couple ingredients to highlight, you might be more familiar with this one, is turkey tail. This is a gorgeous turkey tail mushroom, one of my favorite functional mushrooms, so abundant, right? Turkey tail can be found all over, especially the US. It's one of my favorite mushrooms to go and wild harvest, but it's gorgeous, right? Trimedes versicolor. Trimedes means uh, the one who is thin, and versicolor means of various colorings. You can tell from this gorgeous image of our turkey tail, right? And what we love about turkey tail, we call turkey tail your guard your gut mushroom. And so there's lots of research coming out about prebiotics found in turkey tail mushroom. So not only is turkey tail supportive to our immune system, right? If you've come to previous webinars about functional mushrooms for immune support and as an adaptogen to support occasional stress, it also additionally is supporting our gut health. So really exciting that turkey tail is in our new coffee. So this is it. Um, and it's really exciting. I think of this product, it's so new for us at Four Sigmatic. It's the first time we've incorporated probiotics in a product, but we have this trifecta. So we've done probiotics, right? We have this 1 billion um, CFUs of uh, a strain of probiotics called Bacillus subtilis. And the strain that we use, a lot of you wrote questions about this uh, before, before the webinar in, in an email, and the strain we use is called DE111, and it's a heat-resistant strain. So really excited about this. It's a very hardy group of, um, of probiotics that are actually able to survive uh, heat. So you can actually still brew this coffee in a French press, in a pour over, hot water will not kill this bacterial strain. And it also survives the acidic environment of our stomach so that it can get into our gut, into our colon, um, and actually survive and thrive down there. So very exciting, this uh, Bacillus subtilis strain of, of probiotic, and then of course prebiotics from not only that yacon, also from the turkey tail, and then in all of our mushroom coffee, we always put chaga mushroom extract, right? Incredible, defend your immune, you know, support immune system with chaga, and, and then coffee, right? So it is real coffee. A lot of you asked what it tastes like. It tastes like coffee, it's delicious. I'm drinking a cup now, uh, but it's organic, fair trade, Arabica coffee. It's sourced from Guatemala, um, but you're getting your daily cup of coffee, your probiotics, your prebiotics, and your functional mushrooms in one drink. So this is so exciting. I cannot wait for you all to try it and let me know and let us know what, what your feedback is, how you feel, what you think. All right, I'm gonna minimize my screen and see if we can jump into some Q and A and I'm gonna answer a bunch of your questions and then maybe I'll stop my share. And then I will share the discount code with you in a little bit. So let's see. Um, Mona, I'm interested about your question. What is the effect of alcohol on gut health? Is it to be avoided 100%? Um, so the way that I'll speak about this is from an herbal perspective. When we're looking at taking, whether it's a functional mushroom or an herb, um, to support our gut health, we want to make sure that that plant or that fungi is actually able to make its way down into our colon. And alcohol primarily gets absorbed in our stomach, right? So when we're talking about, you know, let's say functional mushrooms, should I take um, it in one form or another? We want to make sure that you're actually getting the compounds or the probiotics or the prebiotics into the place, so into our colon. Um, and so I would definitely recommend, you know, doing a liquid or um, 
not, not an alcohol based form to actually get those uh, beneficial properties into, into your, into your gut, into your colon. Okay. You guys are awesome. So many questions. So Karen, do all four Sigmatic products have pre and probiotics in them? No, this is our first product that has probiotics. So we launched it last week and very excited, but all of our products do have functional mushrooms and um, we're learning more that functional mushrooms like chaga and turkey tail do contain prebiotic fibers. Okay. Just curious as to whether Forzimatic plans to expand. Um, I'm a loyal customer from Nigeria. Wonderful, Sylvia. Um, yes, yeah, so you can imagine the logistics. Absolutely. I'm so happy you're here. So we do have our international website. Uh, this coffee is not yet available internationally. We hope to make it that way soon. You can always um, shop for Sigmatic international.forsigmatic.com or of course, amazon.com and iherb.com. It's a great resource to buy for Sigmatic products if you are outside of the US or Canada. Crystal, could we get a copy of the webinar to um, review when needed? Absolutely. So all of you are going to be receiving an email tomorrow. I'm going to send you the recording of this webinar so you can go back and watch it. And then if you have other questions, we are always here to support you, right? You can email us support at foursigmatic.com. So if you have a question in an hour or tomorrow or when you watch it again, please don't hesitate to reach out and let us know what we can support you with and what we can answer. Okay. Yeah, so um, someone was asking about um, if probiotics are able to survive stomach acid. Yeah, so it depends on the strain. And so that's why we chose this Bacillus subtilis DE111 strain, um, which is a very hardy um, a strain that is actually both heat stable and able to survive that acidic environment in our stomach. So wonderful questions. So are there any decaf versions? Yeah, caffeine content. So in this specific new coffee, there is caffeine, right? We're using real coffee. Uh, so there's about 100 milligrams of caffeine per serving. If you don't drink caffeine, um, we don't have a pro prebiotic specific alternative, um, you know, for Sigmatic product for you, but we do have turkey tail in our mushroom chai latte, and that is a decaf product. It's delicious. It has wonderful warming carminative spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, ginger, and is a really great caffeine-free option to still get uh, that, that turkey tail mushroom extract and those prebiotics. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so Amanda's kind of asking about how much to take. Is it safe to take your regular probiotic and drink your Four Sigmatic product in the same day? Um, every body is so different and it's just, this comes back to a dosage question of how much is right? How much can I take? So we recommend, you know, Amanda, I would recommend maybe starting with, um, just this Four Sigmatic coffee, even for a few days and seeing how you feel. And then it's always my biggest goal uh, in my clinical practice, it was like this with all of you, it's like this is how can I help you get more connected to your own body? So giving you the tools and the resources so eventually you don't need me, right? And you can say, oh, I know what's going on with my body. I know how to tune in and feel what's right for me. And I also know what I can do to support whatever arises. So I know that's not a straightforward answer, but everybody is so different. Continue to tune in, to listen to your own body and to experiment, right? Starting with one serving of whether it's this mushroom coffee with probiotics or another Four Sigmatic product you're using, start with a serving a day, especially if you're new to consuming functional mushrooms or our products. Do that for a couple days recommend three to five days before building up, right? And then keep listening, keep tuning in and, and paying attention to your body. That's the best 
the best guide, the best teacher. So much wisdom in here. Okay. Yeah, so Bethany, I hope that answers your question as well. How often, oh, should we be eating prebiotic and probiotic foods? Um, I, so diversity is, is the key, right? So more than how much sauerkraut can you eat in one day, what diversity can you incorporate? And know that whatever you're eating, right, when we're eating whole foods and a diversity of colors, uh, we're actually feeding different uh, healthy organisms within our body, right? When we're eating fibers, we're supporting those good bacteria. When we're eating not so healthy things like sugar and processed foods, we're feeding those bad guys. So think about a diverse diet. Um, and it goes back, you know, so, so many people ask, like, what should I eat? Is it okay to have you name it, gluten, soy, dairy, and everybody is unique. If there are three kind of umbrella suggestions that I recommend for all bodies, it's as much as possible, eating seasonally, eating locally, and eating organic. So when we talk about eating seasonally, spring is such a lovely time to think about this because what are the first greens or what are the first plants that pop up in the spring? Right after a long winter where not a lot is growing, especially in places you know that we have full seasons like Colorado where I'm based, the first plants that begin to pop up are a lot of our really bitter greens, things like dandelion. Incredible, right? We know that bitter is wonderful ally for detox and supporting our liver health. And so paying attention to the seasons, what's growing, what's out there, and that being such an awesome indicator to knowing what our bodies are looking for and what our bodies can actually really benefit from at that time of the year. Okay. Yeah, let's see. How long until you start feeling the benefits? That's a great question, Jason. Um, again, depending on your body, it's, it's so different. So, uh, yeah, uh, what else you're eating it with, right? If you are totally new to things like functional mushrooms, prebiotics, probiotics, but we do have this really great resource called the Shroom Club. If any of you are not part of that, I highly recommend joining. It's our private Facebook group, and it's a way to have conversations with other people that are on a similar path, right? So that are experimenting with new Four Sigmatic products or healthy, you know, holistic solutions to well-being. And so I encourage you experimenting, trying, using this in your own life, and then sharing. And stories are such a powerful way to really learn and um, believe in what these ingredients are doing for us, right? I can tell you about the research and the history of, of use for days, but really experiencing it in your own body is so profound. So try it and let us know what you think. Yeah, can this coffee be mixed with lion's mane coffee? Absolutely. Uh, that's a great idea. You can do half and half. I always encourage mixing and matching, especially with Four Sigmatic products. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I'm doing a talk later on personalized care and it, it really comes back to this uniqueness of our own being. And so paying attention to what you need, if you're really looking to support productivity and focus, you have a big day of meetings, you don't wanna give up your lion's mane coffee, absolutely, do half lion's mane coffee, half mushroom coffee with probiotics. Great, Jacqueline. Is the coffee appropriate grind for a French press? Yes, Dana, it's exactly what I did this morning. Uh, so French press, cold brew, pour over coffee machine. More important is what are you used to doing? Do you typically make your coffee in a French press or a coffee machine? The important thing is consistency, right? With all functional mushroom products. Again, we're not talking about band-aids. These are long-term solutions to our health and well-being. So we always want to be thinking about what's going to be easy for us. Right? what's part of our existing routine. And so do what you're used to doing, right? That consistency is more important than the perfect method of brewing. Yeah, you're welcome, Tina. Um, okay, yeah, speak to the amount of caffeine. So compared to regular coffee, this does have 
about the equivalent caffeine, 100 milligrams of caffeine per serving. Of course, the caffeine content can slightly vary based on how long you brew, All right? So you're gonna do a cold brew versus just a couple minute French press, but about 100 milligrams, so that's pretty, pretty standard for a normal cup of coffee in terms of caffeine content. Daphne, will we be making this an in instant form? Love the suggestion. We very seriously consider all of your feedback in the way that we innovate and create products. So not yet, but I will definitely take that to the team and see what we can do in the future. Okay. Yeah, Karen, I don't love coffee. What are other products to get, to get benefits in your ingredients? So most of our Four Sigmatic products are actually free of caffeine. Um, our coffee, of course, is all real coffee. The ground coffee is full caffeine. Our instant coffees are half calf, so about 50 milligrams of caffeine per serving. And then uh, a couple additional options for you, Karen, would be um, our elixirs. So chaga elixir is a wonderful coffee alternative. It brews just when you mix it with water, it, it has this really jet black kind of bitter earthy flavor. So it's a wonderful coffee alternative. Same with that chai latte that I brought up earlier. Typically chai has black tea in it, which of course is caffeinated. We actually don't have black tea in ours, so it, there's no caffeine. And instead we've added um, both reishi and turkey tail mushroom. So that's a great option for you, a chaga elixir or chai latte to start with. Um, yeah, Randy, reach out to us, support at foursigmatic.com. Uh, Randy's saying, I want to talk to my healthcare practitioner um, to make sure that I'm choosing the right products for his personal health. I love that you asked this question. Reach out to support and we can provide you with the information that you, that you need about our ingredients. Okay, you guys are great. So many, so many questions. Um, David is saying we use a Vietnamese slow drip um, that nearly boils the water. So quite a bit hotter than typical coffee pot during the week and can be the probiotic survive. Yeah, so depending on how long you, you boil it for, if you're boiling it for about five minutes, that would be, um, I would recommend maybe that length of time to ensure that uh, this probiotic strain survives, but it is really strong. It's heat resistant, super hardy strain. Um, so you should be good to go. What a cool way to brew your coffee. Yes. Yeah, Diana, lots of studies about this particular strain. So you, I encourage you always, always, always to do more research, right? Take what we're saying and then go and explore on your own. So Bacillus subtilis DE111, you can absolutely go look at um, all the research out there. Um, please do. Okay. Yeah, Dennis is saying, when we eat Jerusalem artichokes, our stomachs are uncomfortable. What does this mean for the inulin probiotics in the mushroom? Yeah, it could be tough on your stomach. You might want to try a different form or maybe making a decoction. Um, so instead of just eating it, you can make a long what's called a hot water boil. Um, and you could try a different, a couple other forms of prebiotics and you might just be sensitive to, to the artichokes or your body might not love it in that form. So um, cutting it up, putting it in some water and letting it slow boil uh, and then straining it out and drinking that, Dennis, could be a really good, good option for you. Or other prebiotics, our alliums, dandelion root, chicory root, um, play around with some other forms as well. Okay. Oh my gosh, so many questions. I'm like, how do I answer all of these? I'm trying to skip over the ones we've kind of answered. So uh, Molly, this is a great question. We'll end on this. And then if I didn't get to your question, send them in an email. We're here to help you guys always. But Molly is asking, is there a downside to always boost, boosting your immune system with mushrooms like chaga? And so what I want to remind you is Functional mushrooms are not immune stimulators, right? They're called immune modulators, which means that they're not pushing our body in one direction or another. They're like cruise control for our immune system. Those of you that have come to previous webinars have heard me talk about this extensively. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about taking functional mushrooms. 
and why the tradition and the recommendation where we see the most benefits is taken as a tonic, which means long-term every single day as a way to build and nourish the system. Um, so they're actually not just boosting our immune system, they're modulating, right? So they're really balancing. If there's overactive immunity, they can tamper down that immune response. If there's underactive immune activity, they can kick into gear immune response. So they're really, think of them like this cruise control. And so um, they're safe. The tradition is to take every day. That's why we add them to daily beverages, right? We know it's very hard to get people to start new habits, especially something like drinking mushrooms. So we add them to the things you already do to make it easy to, to consume them daily. Um, 